Well, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Davide. I'm uh, Save UK uh, HST, which is Humanitarian Search Team, but also former student at the IOE, where I studied between 2011 and 2012. Um, I uh, conducted my research at the IOE around the area of, uh, of inclusive education in developing countries, and I wrote a dissertation about an inclusive education project, a pilot run by Handicap International in uh, Nairobi, in uh, Kibera, the slum of Nairobi. Um, so the reason why I decided to study at the IOE was that I came from a very, very different background. I didn't have any experience of uh, education in uh, developing countries and uh, uh, or education in emergencies. I was working as um, a musician for 10 years, like playing double bass in classical orchestras and uh, bass guitar in various bands. Uh, but I was also interested in, in inclusive education because I worked a lot with uh, children with disabilities and I've been a special education needs uh, uh, teacher in a secondary school in Italy. So. I decided that I wanted to explore more how inclusive education worked and what was the concept of inclusive education in other countries. And to do that, I said, okay, I need a kind of a theoretical background on the main concept of uh, development um, and uh, international development. So I moved to London and I did the master uh, at the IOE. Um, yeah, during the master I did uh, a research and my dissertation was focused on the re research which was eventually a kind of an evaluation of a Handicap International uh, run project uh, in, uh, in Nairobi, a pilot project and I used the capability approach. Um, of course, uh, while I was studying, I was also looking around because I was quite anxious about what would be next. So, yes, I did. A, I volunteered at Handicap International, even in London, even after my, even after I completed the, my research. Um, but yeah, it was quite hard to enter the field, as I think all of you know. This is very. Uh, typical. Um, so basically after the graduation for four or five months I was just sending applications around and not getting many answers um, until I saw um, a, a traineeship opportunity at Save UK which was not something completely new to me because the, during my studies at the IOE and during a seminar uh, we had as a guest uh, uh, Charlotte Balfour Paul, Paul, which was the um, and still is the senior education emergency advisor at uh, Save UK. So she told us about uh, um, education emergency, which was not something we were much focused on during uh, the master, and also about this opportunity at uh, Save UK. So, but back then, uh, when she came. Um, I decided not to apply straight forward because I had to write my dissertation, so I was quite busy. But after the dissertation, I said, okay, this is the right time and let's try. Of course, I was looking for something that was paid, but after three or four months uh, without a job in London, um, it's not a very easy life. So I said, okay, let's go even for this traineeship. And I have to say the traineeship was extremely good. Um, it was six months based in the headquarters and then uh, six months based in a Save the, Children, Save the Children Country office. So the six months in London were about, uh, um, were focused on um, like some structured learning, so there was distance learning, but also uh, some simulations um, to understand the context of uh, emergencies. And, um, and also was working with the education in emergency team. Um, after six months, I was deployed to, to 
to Iraq, to Dohuk in the Kurdistan region, uh, to support the new education emergency program of uh, Save the Children. Uh, for some, I think, some mistake, I was given a lot of responsibility and I became very quickly the coordinator of the uh, education emergency response in the Hook, where we had about uh, 100,000 Syrian refugees back then. Um, then, after, and I really enjoyed, it was a very challenging time, but I really enjoyed and I understood that was the, the, the kind of job I, I would want to do. So, I, when there was an opportunity to apply for an ERP position, which was uh, uh, the, the former name of what I am now, uh, ERP was Emergency Response Personnel, I said, okay, maybe I don't have enough, enough experience, but I, nevertheless, I, uh, I should apply. So I applied and I actually got the job, and now I've been two years working with Save UK, in the field of education emergencies. Uh, basically what I do, I'm uh, kind of a rapid response team member, so I'm deployed uh, to different countries wherever uh, a Save the Children country office needs support for education emergencies, and I can mm, cover three different roles. One is a program manager, so managing an education emergency program. The second one is a technical advisor, so it's more about the strategic development, the, the ensuring the quality of the program and proposal development. And uh, the third thing is a cluster coordination, so I can work in the capacity of a cluster coordinator, and I've been doing that in uh, Sudan, in Darfur. So, in the last two years, I've been deployed to five different countries and five different responses, which were very, very difficult, very different and difficult. Um, so the first one was Iraq. So I went back to Iraq as, a, as an ERP back then, uh, continuing basically what I was doing with the only difference, but that in the meantime, um, ISIS had to cover Mosul, which was like 60 kilometers from the hook, and so we had also um, this influx, a massive influx of IDPs and not only refugees. The second one uh, was in Sierra Leone during the Ebola outbreak, so I was developing the strategy of uh, Save the Children, the education emergency strategy, and I was there for two months. And the third one was in Darfur as a subnational cluster coordinator for the five Darfur states. Uh, then I was in Nepal very, very briefly for about 10 days, uh, which was not very successful because basically I burned out and uh, I had to leave the country uh, because my level of stress has reached a point of no return. Then I had to take a break, and after that I was uh, deployed to Tanzania for about two months for the Burundi refugee response, which was for Save the Children a very small response, um, and I was working as a program manager. In terms of the challenges, uh, there are so many that I don't know where to start from, but maybe I can focus on two challenges uh, that I constantly face. One is um, the fact that despite all the efforts, I think that the, the, the universities and also the organizations uh, are doing to disseminate the core concepts of education emergencies and the INE standards, uh, there's still a lot to be done I think in the field because uh, for as um, strange as it may sound uh, it's not uncommon to find uh, uh, quite a lot of education emergency professionals uh, who don't know much or not very familiar with the INE standards so I think there's a need to there's a need to trickle down those content 
concepts uh, and make sure that they become kind of common language of uh, education in emergency because I think, yeah, when you study at the IOE, you assume that when you talk about education emergency, everyone is familiar with the INE standards, but it's not, it's not like this, unfortunately. Um, the second thing, um, one of the main challenges is, uh, as I worked as a cluster coordinator in Sudan and also education working group coordinator in Sierra Leone, um, uh, it's the, the fact that I think once you are in the field and you're facing an emergency, uh, not always coordination among education act actors is uh, valued and especially when you come from uh, a, sit a calm situation like it was in, in Sierra Leone where there hadn't been any emergency in the last 15 years before uh, Ebola. Um, like development partners were not really ready to coordinate and everyone was reacting rather than planning uh, and coordinating a response. Then I think for other challenges, there are so many from a uh, um, personal point of view, professional point of view, but I think my time is running out. so. If you want to get in touch with me, um, I'm happy to, to, to have a chat even on Skype and my uh, email is d-a-v-c-o-l-t-r-i at gmail.com. Um, so thank you for your time and good luck.